everybody for attending this session. It is for RESIST, which is always great. I love to look at the slide because I tend to forget sometimes what RESIST stands for, which is Response Evaluation Criteria in Solid Tumor. And we'll be reviewing versions 1.0 and 1.1. Just what the differences are, what to look for when you are doing a study, and actually out on site, what we see in the real world in terms of these two uh, versions. Our learning objectives today will be to differentiate between RESIST 1.0 and 1.1, describe the components of RESIST um, and tumor data, correctly calculate target disease um, response, identify and predict common trends with tumor data, and use working knowledge of common trends to help develop case support forms for oncology study. Our goal is really to have everything as consistent as possible. And the way that we can really assist in consistency and uniformity is to make sure that we, as um, our responsibilities are, have everything described in a clear and detailed protocol. As you know, in the real world, sometimes that's impossible to do, or we think it's clear to us, and then it gets out on sites, and it's pretty amazing what the interpretations are you know, from that. So we'll uh, give you some tips about what to look for and how you can recognize when there may be issues with the data that is being collected at your site. So the RESIST criteria are a set of commonly agreed upon criteria used to evaluate sets of tumor scans and define when a subject response stabilizes or progresses during treatment. And there are four categories of response, complete response, CR, partial response, PR, stable disease, SD, and progressive disease, PD. So to date, um, there have been the two versions of criteria that have been published. The benefit to using RESIST is that it validates consensus on tumor response. There is, um, as I mentioned earlier, more consistency in evaluation and interpretation of clinical trials. Both have now been widely adopted by regulatory authorities, co-op groups, industry, and academia. So we'll talk a little bit about you know, how this came about. Our goal, again, is to make sure that the data is, reproduced, is consistent that it is reproducible, and that it really is more predictive of malignancy status. So a little bit of history about RESIST. In 2000, RESIST 1.0 set forth new rules to define when cancer patients respond, progress, or remain the same during a course of treatment. And it was originally intended to apply standards for clinical use, and later it became, um, later it evolved for use in cancer subjects. So this is actually one where you'll see the trend actually went the other way, which is used in clinical trials and then um, now used, you know, used pretty regularly for um, clinical trials for cancer. So I'm sorry, yeah, started off in clinical use and then began to be used for clinical trials for um, cancer subjects. This involved collaboration between um, organizations from Europe and U.S. and Canada. So I think that something that we can think about, sort of comparable example to that, would be our ICH. So we know that ICH was developed to develop a standard um, among the groups that are using it. It's now pretty much you know, kind of the standard uh, worldwide in doing clinical trials. In January of 2009, RESIST 1.1 became the first formal overhaul and re revision of the uh, criteria. And our purpose really was how to handle the data and also how to address the shortcomings of the original version. As you know, it would be ter terrific if we could issue one set of standards or guidances there without modification, but you, know, you rarely see that happen. So this is the you know, second iteration of that. So remember that version 1.0 was widely used globally in the past decade. 1.1 has now gained acceptance. It's you know, taken a few years, but now it's uh, gained acceptance. The crazy thing is, and I know that I you know, was really surprised about this when I started going out to sites to monitor. The crazy thing is that many of the sites um, will use both versions. So I think the first tip for you when you are thinking of doing a study at a site or you are headed out to a site to monitor is to really make sure that your site is aware what version of RESIST you're going to be using. And then to complicate things, um, many of the studies and the protocols written will use a combination or will modify one or the other of the um, RESIST criteria. 
So that's the challenge that you have. But as you know, if you are not clear, if you haven't provided the training, and we know that training is all important in this uh, field of ours, then our sites will default to what they're the most comfortable with or what they've used uh, most recently. So it is our responsibility to make sure that the sites are clear about what the resist criteria um, version is and if there are going to be modifi if there are modifications to that used specifically 